In this video, I'm going to cover how to balance redox reactions. So the first thing that we have to know uh, in order to balance redox reactions is how to assign oxidation numbers to atoms um, both when they're on their own and when they're in compounds. So here is, this is something that we covered in chapter four, um, but we'll review it now um, and hopefully this stuff looks familiar. So generally, um, when we write any chemical compound, the cation comes first and the anion comes second. So in a compound like NaH, then the Na is positive and therefore the H is negative. Uh, but in a compound like HCl, the H comes first, so the H is positive and the Cl is negative. So we can see that um, H the oxidation of hydrogen is usually plus one, but sometimes it can be minus one. Uh, the oxidation number of a free element is always zero. So helium is pure, uh, a pure element, so its oxidation number is zero. N2 is pure nitrogen gas, even though there's two of them, so its oxidation number is zero. And any pure element has an oxidation number equal to zero. Um, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion equals the charge of the ion. So Na has a, a positive one charge, plus one charge, and its oxidation number is also plus one. In this compound, H has a minus one charge, and its oxidation number is also minus one. So the oxidation number of any ion, if it's just a single atom ion, its oxidation number is equal to its charge. So N3 minus has an oxidation number of three minus. Um, the oxidation number of hydrogen is usually plus one, but sometimes, like in a compound like this, then the H might be minus one. Or if it's H2 and it's pure hydrogen by itself, then the oxidation number would be zero. Um, the oxidation number of oxygen is usually negative two, Ex uh, except when oxygen is bonded to uh, atoms that are more electronegative than itself. So there's only one atom that's more electronegative than oxygen, and that's fluorine. So when oxygen is bonded to fluorine, oxygen becomes the positive part of that compound, because F is even more electronegative, so F is the negative part of that compound. Um, and whenever we're talking about a peroxide ion, which is two oxygen atoms bonded together, having a negative two charge because it has extra electrons, more electrons than um, uh, O2 molecular oxygen. Um, whenever we're talking about the peroxide ion, the uh, uh, oxidation state of each oxygen, given that the, ox that the oxidation state of this entire compound is minus two, because it's equal to the charge, Therefore, the oxidation state of each oxygen atom must be minus one. Minus one here, minus one here, for a total of minus two. So again, um, oxygen is usually minus two. Here's a couple of weird cases where it's not. Um, oxidation number of group A elements is plus one. The oxidation number of group two elements is plus two, just like their charge. The oxidation number of group seven elements is minus one, just like their charge. This is the halogens, the group seven elements. So um, halogens are almost always negative one, unless, again, they're uh, bonded to an element that, they, that is more electronegative than themselves, in which case they are no longer negative, then they would be the positive part of that compound, and they would have a positive oxidation number. But again, those are rare cases. So the way that we figure out the oxidation number in almost any compound is the usual oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one. That's a very important rule. The oxidation number of oxygen is almost always minus two. That's a very important rule. The oxygen number of a, or oxidation number of a free element is always zero. And the oxidation number of an ion equals the charge of the ion. So um, this is, these four rules are pretty, pretty much the four that you need to determine the oxidation number of any atom, even those that don't appear on this chart. Because if you're looking at a compound that has an element that is not defined by one of these rules, that compound almost always has an element that is defined by these rules, or more than one element that is defined by these rules. And if that's the case, 
even if you don't know what silicon is, for example, or germanium or something because it doesn't appear on this list, if you're looking at silicon tetrahydride, then you would be looking at H's and, you, and H is on this list. So if you can determine half of the compound, if you know the oxidation numbers of half of the compound, then you can figure out the oxidation number of the other elements in the compound that you don't know using these rules. So um, again, make sure that uh, if this seems, if you're a little fuzzy on this, go back to chapter four and check out this chapter again and try to revisit this information again, because this is going to be really important uh, in order to balance a redox reaction. We cannot balance the reaction unless we can accurately assign oxidation numbers to atoms. So um, remember the rules for balancing redox re reactions, and this is a little bit different than balancing reactions like we've done before. Um, when we balanced reactions before, which I think might also have been back in chapter four, maybe chapter three, when we balanced reactions way, way back then, we were balancing reactions based on mass. And what that means is we were making sure that if I had two carbon atoms on the left side, that I also had two carbon atoms on the right side. And if I had five sodium atoms on the left, I had to have five on the right, and so on and so on. So I was making sure that the same number and the same type of atom appeared on both sides of the reaction. So that's balancing a reaction by mass. But what we're going to do in this chapter is balance reactions both by mass and by charge. So, and we'll see why it's different. We'll encounter some examples where we can't, we can't use our old strategies anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because although the reactions appear as if they are balanced already by mass, because the same number and the same type of atoms are already on both sides of the equation, those reactions are not balanced because their charges are not balanced. So um, to balance redox reactions, the first step is assigning oxidation states to every atom in every compound on both the reactant side and the product side. Um, we determine the element that was oxidized and the element that was reduced. And you do that by comparing the oxidation states on the left side with the oxidation states on the right side. If the oxidation state of an atom has changed, then it has either been oxidized or reduced. Um, once you have determined which elements have been oxidized and reduced, you separate them and you write the oxidation half reaction and you write the reduction half reaction, including how many electrons are necessary in order to move the atom from its current oxidation state to its, its next oxidation state. For example, if you're going from plus one to minus one, that's going to take two electrons. Uh, one to get you down to zero and another one to get you to negative one. So um, we write those oxidation and reduction half reactions with the electrons and the next step is balancing the reactions by mass which means that we do what we did back in chapter three. We make sure that if I have two magnesium atoms on the left I have two on the right and so on and so on. The only difference between what we're doing now and what we did back then is that when I get to H and O, I sometimes I have H's and O's on the left side, and I don't have any H's and O's on the right side. And so you're asking the question, how could I possibly balance this reaction? There are no H's and O's on this side. <coughs> um, we'll, we'll get to an example like this. In that case, we would add H2O wherever we need an oxygen. Therefore, our source of oxygen would be H2O, and that if that adds H, extra H's to one side, we would add uh, H plus if we didn't have a source of H on the other side of the reaction. Um, and finally, if the reaction is done in a base, then we're going to have to neutralize any H plus with OH minus, um, and we'll talk more about that when we get to that example. So after we balance the reactions by mass, which again just means that we're making sure the same type of atoms and the same number of atoms are on each side, then we balance the half reactions by charge. And this is where we use the electrons in the half reactions to make sure that the total charge is balanced. So we, um, we make sure there's the same amount of negative charge on each side, and we do that by adding electrons um, and the way that we can add electrons is by multiplying an entire reaction by 
some number. So for example, if um, I need to adjust the number of electrons, I need to adjust every product and reactant in that entire reaction. Um, and finally, after we make sure that all the electrons have been balanced between the half reactions, we add them together. Um, and we've added reactions before. We'll, we'll go over that in the example. And finally, we can check to make sure that we've done it right, because this is a really long process. So after we've gone through this really long process, you want to make sure that you did it right. We can check to make sure that we got the right answer um, by counting the atoms on both sides and by counting the charge on both sides. And if the atoms are equal and the charge is equal, then we must have done it right. All right, so let's look at an example. So here is an example of a reaction um, that we need to balance. And it says that this is in acidic solution. So I just left the rules up here to remind ourselves what we're doing as we go, as we go down. So um, first of all, let's look at whether this reaction is balanced. I have one bromine one bromine, three oxygen atoms, zero oxygen atoms, one antimony, and one antimony. So it's not balanced, first of all, because I don't have oxygen. And beyond that, this looks really weird. If we were to come across this in chapter three, we wouldn't have known what to do with it. Because how can I balance oxygen if I don't have any oxygen over on this side of the reaction? There's oxygen over here, and there's not over here. It looks like this reaction is broken. So in order to do that, um, we're going to have to add H2O. If I don't have any oxygen on this side, I just add water, because these reactions are taking place in water, so there's plenty of H2O around. So I can just add H2O to this side of the reaction. So let's do that when we get to that step. First step, um, assign oxidation states. So we have to do this to every element in, on both sides. So let's do the easy ones first. This ion is a, is a monatomic ion, and its charge is 3 plus. Therefore, its oxidation state is 3 plus. This one, monatomic, its charge is 5 plus. Therefore, its oxidation state is 5 plus. Br is monatomic, minus 1. Its charge is minus 1. Its oxidation state is minus 1. Those three were all pretty easy. Now let's look at this one. Oxygen, in almost every compound, oxygen has a minus two oxidation state, unless oxygen is bonded to an element that is more electronegative than itself. In this case, oxygen is bonded to bromine, which is not more electronegative. So we can assume that oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two. Since there are three oxygen atoms, that gives us minus two, minus 4, minus 6. So 3 oxygen atoms gives me a negative charge or a negative oxidation number of negative 6. The total charge on the entire compound is negative 1. And the oxidation numbers of all of the atoms in the compound must add up to equal the charge. So let's write that into an equation so you can see what I mean. I don't know what the oxidation number of Br is, x, but I do know that when I add it to the oxidation number of oxygen, which we just said was minus 6, or rather, let me write it this way, minus 2 times 3, because I have 3 of them, I do know that when I add the oxidation number of bromine to the oxidation number of oxygen, it equals the charge of the compound, which is equal to minus 1. So what I have here is x plus minus 6 equals minus 1. So x equals plus 5. So if x is plus 5, and O is minus 2 times 3, then that equals negative 1, just like the charge on the compound. All right, so now I have figured out, I know that bromine is plus 5, oxygen is minus 2, antimony is plus 3, minus 1, plus 5. I've, I've assigned all the oxidation states to every element on both sides. Now, what was oxidized and what was reduced? 
Remember, oxidized means the oxidation number increases. Which oxidation number increased? Well, from antimony on the left to antimony on the right, I went from plus 3 to plus 5. That number got bigger, therefore this is an oxidation. Here, which was reduced? Well, I don't even have oxygen on the right, so it doesn't seem like it was oxygen. So, it must be bromine by process of elimination. And we can see, in fact, it went from plus 5 to minus 1. So the oxidation number of bromine got smaller. It went from plus 5 on this side to minus 1 over here. So this is our reduction. So now we know what was oxidized and what was reduced. Let's break them into half reactions. So um, the reduction... is BrO3 minus goes to Br minus. The oxidation is Sb3 plus goes to Sb5 plus. All right, so I've broken them into half reactions. Now, um, I have to make sure that I have the right number of electrons. I have to add electrons to my half reaction. So when I add electrons to my half reaction, what I'm doing is accounting for the change in oxidation state. If bromine went from plus 5 to minus 1, by how many did its oxidation state change? Well, it decreased by 6, right? make some more room over here. It decreased by 6. It went down by 5, and then it got to 0, right? And then it went down one more to get to negative 1. So the oxidation number of bromine decreased by 6. That requires 6 negatively charged electrons. And 6 negatively charged electrons will add to bromine and take bromine from 5 plus down to 1 minus. So I added 6 electrons to bromine. All right, let's do the same thing to uh, the oxidation half. Antimony went from 3 plus to 5 plus. So I, if it increased, I can't add electrons on this side. Because look what that does. If I add electrons on the reaction side, on the reactant side, that decreases the oxidation number of whatever is also a reactant. Six, minus 6 plus 5 equals minus 1. So with electrons, all I, all I can do is add electrons. I can add electrons to this side or I can add electrons to this side. And what I'm trying to do with those electrons is, is account for this change in oxidation state. So if I went from plus 3 to plus 5, I know that's a change of 2, right? But do the electrons go on this side or do the electrons go on this side? Well, let's try to put them over here. Two electrons on this side. Two electrons plus three plus. What would that do to our oxidation state? If I add two electrons to antimony three plus, what will be the new oxidation state of antimony? It will be one plus. Because these two electrons will decrease the three down to a one. But it's trying to get to five, right? So if I put the electrons on the wrong side, then when I add the, electron, the charge of the electrons to the oxidation state of the element, it will not equal the right number on the other side. So let's move those. Let's see what happens if we put them on the other side. Plus two electrons. Now I have five plus, plus two minus. That equals three plus. Therefore, the electrons must go on this side. And of course, there's an easier way to determine that. Remember what reduction means. Reduction is gain of electrons. Remember our old mnemonic device here. Oil rig. Oops. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons.
electrons. So if a reduction is gaining electrons, how do I gain electrons? Well, they are reactants when I gain them. If an oxidation is loss of electrons, how do I represent a loss of electrons in a chemical reaction? I represent them as products. So gaining electrons, then there are reactants, that's a reduction. Losing electrons, then there are products, that's an oxidation. So now I have drawn in the number of electrons I need on both sides. Um, now what I need to do is balance the half reactions by mass. So I have one Br and I have one Br, so that's good. But I have three oxygens on the reactant side and I have zero oxygens on the product side. So I need three oxygens. In order to add oxygen, I actually add H2O. That's my source of oxygen. So that's three oxygens that I've added to this side. But in the process of adding three oxygens to this side, I've also added three times two. I've also added six hydrogens to this side. So I was, it looked good for a minute. I had one bromine and one bromine, three oxygens and three oxygens. Oh, but now I have six hydrogens on this side and zero hydrogens on this side. So how do I account for the fact that I have zero hydrogens on the other side? Well, in order to add hydrogen, I add H plus to balance H. So I need six of them, so I have six H plus on this side. All right, so now I have six H's on the left, three times two, six H's on the right. One bromine on the left, one bromine on the right. Three oxygens on the left, three oxygens on the right. At this point, the electrons are not balanced. I have six on this side and I don't have six on this side, but we're gonna get there in a minute. Let's, let's leave the electrons alone for a minute. All right, let's go down to this one. One antimony and one antimony. And two electrons on this side and none on this side, but again, we'll leave the electrons for the next step. So these are now balanced by mass. I have all the same number and type of atoms on each side of each reaction. So now I balance the half reactions by charge. So everything, all the atoms are balanced. Six H's, six H's, one bromine, one bromine, three oxygen, three oxygen. But I have six electrons on this side and zero electrons on this side. I have two electrons on this side and zero electrons on this side. So when I balance the electrons, I'm trying to get this number and this number to be the same. So if I have six over here and I have two over here, I don't want this number to get any bigger. I want this number to get bigger. So how do I make a two equal to six? I have to multiply by three. I can't just multiply the electrons by three. I have to multiply the entire reaction by three. So that's gonna give me three antimony three antimony five plus plus six electrons. All right, and multiply by three and now I have a new reaction down here where everything is three times bigger. Now my six electrons and my six electrons match. So now what I was doing was balancing by mass which is part of balancing reactions and balancing the electrons which is gonna help me balance the charge. And now that I have six electrons as reactants and six electrons as products, and those numbers are equal, now I can add my half reactions together. So how do we add reactions? Well, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's get rid of this one that we don't need anymore because it was just what happened before I multiplied. Let's get rid of this, I don't need that. And remember, when I add reactions together, the way to add reactions is that anything that appears on the reactant side and the product side that's the same gets canceled. So I have six electrons on the reactant side, I have six electrons on the product side. So those cancel out. Is anything else the same on either side? Doesn't look like it to me. So then that means I put all the products, or excuse me, all the reactants on the reactant side 
the arrow here in the middle, and all the products on the product side. So on the reactant side, I have 6H+. Didn't get canceled. I have 1 bromate, BRO3-. And I have 3 antimony, 3+. Plus. And on the product side, I have 1 BR-. Minus. Sorry, sometimes I circle these charges let me be consistent plus three antimony five plus plus right, that doesn't look very good plus three h two o now let's just check and make sure we copied everything six h's check one bromate, check. Three antimony, check. One bromine, check. Three antimony five plus, check. Three water, check. All right, so this is my final reaction down here. Let's get rid of this other stuff now. So I'm just getting rid of my previous work because I'm kind of running out of space down here. But I would recommend that as you work through these, you do not erase your previous work. In fact, I think you should organize your previous work very, very carefully and keep track of where you've been because that way if you get to this last step and you check your reaction and it's not right and it, it, the atoms and the charge don't match on each side, if you have kept very careful track of how you got to where you are, then it's easier to go back and catch your mistake. But if you have not kept track of where you are and you kind of skip steps and you kind of did some of it in your head and you didn't keep very careful notes, then if you're wrong, you've got to do the whole thing over again and start over from the beginning. So it's very important to keep careful notes and keep your work organized as you work. All right, so let's check. 6H on this side. 3 times 2, 6H on this side, check. 1 bromine on this side. 1 bromine on this side, check. Three oxygen on this side. Three oxygen on this side. Check. Uh, three antimony on this side. Three antimony on this side. Check. All the atoms are good. Okay, so we are balanced by mass. Now let's check the charges. Here I have, this is, there's a lot of charges, so I'm going to have to keep track of this. Six plus from the hydrogen plus one minus from the bromate plus three times three so that's nine plus from three antimony threes all right and then on this side i've got one bromine at minus one plus three times five so that's 15 plus and then here the charge on the water is zero so plus zero all right so let's make sure that those numbers are the same 9 plus 6 is 15 plus. 15 plus minus 1 is 14 plus on this side. And over here I have 15 plus plus 0 minus 1. That's equal to 14 plus. So the charge on each side is the same. All the atoms on each side is the same. So this reaction is balanced. We just checked it and everything checks out. It looks good. So this is how we balance a reaction in acidic solution. Remember that acid equals H plus. So when I balance a reaction in acidic solution, there should be H pluses either as reactants or products. When I balance a reaction in base, remember that base equals OH minus. So if I'm in acid, there should be H plus and there should not be any OH minus. And conversely, if I'm, in, if I'm balancing a reaction in basic solution, there should be OH minus on the left or on the right, and there should not be any H plus. So this reaction has H plus in it. So how would I balance this reaction if I were in base instead of in, re in acid? Let's look at this up here, 6H plus
Okay, so again, acid H+, plus, but if I was instead, this says basic solution, balance this reaction in basic solution, I would do everything that I had already done. It would all be the same. But if I'm in base instead of an acid, I cannot have H plus anymore. So how do I get rid of H plus? Well, I add plus 6OH minus. So I can neutralize the acid. OH minus and H plus, this is a neutralization. This makes H2O. But if I add 6OH minuses to the left side, I also have to add 6OH minuses to the right side. And I have to add these together. 6H plus and 6OH minus makes 6H2O. So I neutralize the 6H pluses by adding 6OH minus. I have to add 6OH minus to both sides. And when I neutralize it, I get 6H2O. So now I'm left with this. Let me move the 6H2O back up here. Now I have 6H2O on this side and 3H2O on this side, and that looks kind of weird. So if I have 6 over here and 3 over here, then I can get rid of these 3, and I can get rid of 3 of these. Right? And just say, well, I'd really then just have 3H2O on this side and 0H2O on this side. So I'll cancel out the water because it's the same on both sides. And that's still going to leave me oops, with 3 of these H2Os. 3H2O. Two O on this side. Let me squeeze this guy in a little closer. Plus six O H minus. So look what it did. When we changed from acidic solution to basic solution by adding O H minus to each side, effectively what it did is it moved the water from the right side as a reactant, or excuse me, as a product, it moved those three water molecules over to the reactant side, so they became reactants. And whereas I had six H pluses as reactants in an acidic solution, I now have six OH minus uh, hydroxide ions as products in the basic solution. So this just kind of swapped these two values. It doesn't always work that way. So um, Although it, you might be tempted to just look at this example we just did and say, oh, all you have to do is swap the waters and swap the H pluses and O minuses. No, that was just convenient that it worked out that way this time. What you should do in order to convert from acidic solution to basic solution is what we just did. If you have H pluses on one side, then you have to add an equivalent number of OH minuses to both sides. You have to create some water molecules. You have to cancel out water molecules on both sides and see where you end up. It's not always going to make some, uh, you know, some switcheroo like we did here. That was just convenient that this one happened to turn out that way. So um, in general, uh, when you're trying to, whether you're working in acidic solution or basic solution, you're going to follow all the same steps like we did. And then the only difference is when you're in acid, you check your final product to make sure you've got H+. And if you're in basic solution, you have to take care of those H+.